And a lot of people that I spoke to was like, this month was so hard. Hell broke out of me. And I'm just like, it just is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's Mercury retrograde. We had a full moon. And it really is where you are on your spiritual journey because we're being guided to let go or should I say surrender the lower vibrational frequencies, the lies that we've been telling ourselves for so long. And it's so easy to hold on to the lie because we're programmed to lie. Everything is okay. Stay positive. Things will change. So suppress all your emotions so no one knows what you're going through well the beautiful thing is i got to play with mercury retrograde for the last seven years and to really harness hermes and to harness all the other beings i play with during mercury retrograde and i must say that this retrograde was probably one of my happiest <laughs> retrogrades ever even though i'm not going to say i didn't slip and slide but the slipping and sliding was far from in between it was more happiness and joy so i've had people say zach things are coming up i can't stop crying why am i crying so much and i say stop asking the why just surrender to it Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone, that you are in control of your life. It doesn't matter where you came from or what the circumstances are. We've all experienced pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. This show is here to help you turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, and supported for who you are, not just the awards and accolades on your walls? You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieve things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, listening to what lights you up, only to feel shame, fear, frustration, and resentment? Your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid to doing something different. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and practiced new concepts and principles, yet you still feel yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself perpetuate a cycle of disappointment. You say you'll change, but your self-limiting beliefs keep running the show, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My Soul Journey program aligns you with your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step into your true magnificence and remember who you are. If you are interested in learning more, contact me at bravetv at kathleenmflanagan.com. Check out AwakeningSpirit.com, an aromatherapy-based body care line offering alternative healing remedies using natural and organic ingredients. <clears throat> Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 40% discount. The products are guaranteed, and if something isn't working, we can reformulate it specifically for you. Visit Grandma's Natural Remedies.net, which is a CBD company that includes essential oils in every blend with either broad spectrum or an isolate. Every product is tested and the lab results are available on the website. <clears throat> Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 20% discount. Each week, we start the show with a sound of tuning forks bringing in love, <clears throat> excuse me, happiness and balance to set the tone for the show and bring out the best in both myself and my guest. Let's begin. Zach Liotis is a beacon of light in the realm of spiritual awakening and empowerment. With a profound understanding of personal energy frequency and a deep connection to the divine, Zach serves as a guide, mentor, and catalyst for transformation. As a spiritual alchemist, Zach is passionate about helping individuals tap into the frequency of God's divine presence within themselves. 
With a blend of spiritual wisdom and practical insight, Zach empowers others to unlock their inner potential, overcome obstacles, and manifest their deepest desires in alignment with their creator. Throughout her own journey, Zach has discovered the transforma transformative power of aligning with God's frequency. Now she shares her insights and experiences with others, offering guidance on how to navigate life's challenges with faith, grace, and resilience, harnessing the frequency of God's presence and loving a life of purpose, abundance, and spiritual fulfillment. Welcome, Zach. Hello. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So good to see your bright, shiny face. I know, and I didn't think my camera was going to work again today. I got on early and I was like, no way. Are you kidding me? And I don't know what magic happened, but here we are. I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. And the wind's blowing through your hair like you're outside. So I assume you have a fan on. Yes, yes, I do. So anyways, I decided we were going to talk about what is going on in the cosmos because it's been a very tumultuous August and everybody I know has not survived or barely survived the battle. They all have scars in one form or another from this month. So I thought, well, I know what I've been through, Helen Beck. I know that most people have felt that way as well, but August, that's something that normally happens in August. So I figured we're just going to let you open up with this because okay. you've had some pretty profound insights as well about this month. So I thought let's just open it up with you sharing. Awesome. Well, thank you. August, I actually had a great August. And a lot of people <laughs> that I spoke to was like, this month was so hard. Hell broke out of me. And I'm just like, it just is going to happen. It's going to happen because Mercury retrograde, we had a full moon. And it really is where you are on your spiritual journey because we're being guided to let go or should I say surrender the lower vibrational frequencies, the lies that we've been telling ourselves for so long. And it's so easy to hold on to the lie because we're programmed to lie. Everything is okay. Stay positive. Things will change. So suppress all your emotions so no one knows what you're going through well the beautiful thing is i got to play with mercury retrograde for the last seven years and to really harness hermes and to harness all the other beings i played with during mercury retrograde and i must say that this retrograde was probably one of my happiest <laughs> retrogrades ever even though i'm not going to say i didn't slip and slide but the slipping and sliding was far from in between it was more happiness and joy so i've had people say zach things are coming up i can't stop crying why am i crying so much and i say stop asking the why just surrender to it just say thank you for leaving my body thank you for leaving my soul thank you for leaving me and thank you for guiding me and teaching me so much of my own life that i've grown through we always want to know the why why is, why do i feel like this why is this why is that sometimes that's great but you don't always need to know i went through so much in my life playing with mercury in the last seven years i remember i used to be driving and i'd be like bawling and i'm like just go away from me i don't want you anymore and i didn't ask why is it coming up it's coming up because it wants to leave your body it's coming up because the memories that are so imprinted in your soul says i'm done with this i don't want this anymore so the more that we just surrender even surrendering our mind, surrendering our soul, even surrendering parts of our body. Why do I say parts of our body? We hold on to so much emotional cloggage in our, in our organs, in our cells, in our bones. So if you have knee problems, it could be stability problems. You have back problems, it could be support problems. If you have heart problems, it could be uh, heartbreak problems. If you have throat problems, it's not speaking up or standing your truth. So it really seems like my whole body is breaking down. It's not. It's telling you to release, let go, let go, let go. And the thing that you should like ask with the question is, what else should I let go of? What else should I surrender? What else do, how else am I going to grow and evolve throughout this four week journey? We're going into post mercury retrograde right now. This is what I call creating your blueprint for the next three months. Mercury for the last three weeks has been showing us um, things that we've been going through has been showing us what has been coming up for us, has been showing us our emotions, has also been showing us snippets of individuals or maybe your own journey. 
So now it's like, do you want this? Work on it. If you don't want it, let it go. Surrender. If it's not meant to be, surrender to it. If it's meant to be, it will be there for you. So right now, I would suggest everyone write their blueprint. What is it that you want to work on until the next Mercury retrograde shows up? And there's a new moon coming up soon. So it's a perfect time to create this blueprint. It's a perfect time to light that green and white candle and to really surrender and understand that it, the cosmos isn't here to create havoc and chaos in your life well it is because that's what awakes you but it's also here to create order so it's up to you if you want order or if you want to live in chaos but the opposite from chaos is order and in order we find internal peace that was a mouthful <laughs> you know how i roll <laughs> i know i i know how you roll i agree with what you were saying because i know that that during the um blue moon that we had I think that was the time when I, I got hit the hardest with it, where I was just so much energy was weighed on me at that moment. Like my whole life blew up and I told everyone there was an explosion in the universe and it just was filtering down to the earth because I felt, and I didn't have a lot on my plate, but it was so many people's problems. All of a sudden the environmental industry blew up and I didn't even know how to deal with it because I'm just doing my little la la happy go lucky kind of place and everything's going smooth. And I'm thinking, wow, this is really nice sailing. And I was really enjoying the ride. And then this blew up. And as one of my coaches said, he said, well, maybe God decided to come along to see how, how would you handle a tsunami? How well are you doing right now? Because, you know, as long as everything's smooth sailing, how are you know everything's easy peasy but once a tsunami hits or something upsets the boat a little bit how are you handling it well i handled it i mean mm -hmm. i didn't know what was going on at first i just felt flattened like i couldn't move and it was just do one thing you know one thing that's all you have to do just to start moving the energy and i remember having a conversation with you telling me that it's like all this heavy dense energy coming coming out that needs to leave. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't know I had that much, but I was think I was receiving so many other people's stuff because I was, as you said, I was problem solving for people because they weren't my problems, but I was helping other people. And most of them, there was only one problem out of all of them that we had to deal with. But I just remember that I just started moving through that because everything was moving. And then I made decisions to decide I was going to start calling people and let them know what I'm doing and getting into um, enrolling them into my program. And my body decided on Saturday, because I made the commitment on Saturday, I was going to call and my body just decided, oh, I don't think so, sweetheart. Oh no, we're sick. We are not doing well today. And I was just like, you're fine. Everything's fine. I did it anyways, because I knew exactly what was happening was that this the ego was trying to stop me because this was to me was my movement forward. You know, as you were saying that blueprint that if I didn't do it, then what's going to be another three months before I decide I'm going to do it. And it was like, no, it's time to do it now. If I want something to change, it's got to start within. And I think what that did, and if people understand this is just moving through something that is very terrifying for you and making phone calls is terrifying. Getting on a stage is easy where that terrifies most people. So, you know, it's relative yeah. folks. And and just moving into that second place because then everything started to open up where, you know, I'm gonna be doing summits and I found places where I can re meet event planners to get on stages or do summits or whatever. And it was like the door just like opened because I said, I'm doing this, here I am. I'm done being small. Yeah. because it's about our smallness and I didn't want to be small. I wanted to live up to my full potential. And I think that was a big factor for Mercury retrograde because retrogrades don't usually affect me, but this one, it hit me pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. It was a physical memory that was trying to hold you back. That's exactly what it is. And we don't realize that it took me many years to understand that it's as we move forward and we want to get uncomfortable with ourselves, our body goes through this paralyzation of, I can't do it because it's that physical childhood memory that shows up. But when you overcome that and be like, no, I can do this because I meant to do this and I'm here to create. And you push that send button like you did. It's like now what you're doing is dissolving that dense energy that you've been holding on to, 
right? Because then it gets then it gets stuck in our mind and it manipulates our mind. So we we got you did a great job, and I was happy I was there with you throughout the journey. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And I have Zach Liotis in the room with us. So we will continue up where we left off at the break. So, yes, we were talking before the break about how our body has remembrance of our emotions and our trauma and our hurt. And even though we thought or even though we think we've let it go in our mind, it's the memory that our body that holds us in that same position year in and year out. And that's why working out is good. That's why going into hot saunas is good. Even if you're doing cold dunks is good. Drinking a lot of water is extremely important. Our body is made up of 70% of water. So these are ways that we could release emotions as well. And I remember when I was doing colon hydrotherapy and as a colon hydrotherapist, I had so many people bawling on the table because as I was releasing substance from their bowels that was attached to so many emotions and they're sitting there they're exactly i don't know why i'm crying i said well because we're getting rid of the the fecal matter which is stagnant matter in your body but it also has an emotion that comes with it the things that i heard when i was in colon hydrotherapy blew my mind in that room and i always say to me myself i wish i wrote these things down because i had so much people so many people going through anger or so many people going through guilt or hate hate was a big one too they held so much hate in their digestive system and that is between your root and your solar plexus and it's in the sacral so in between that whole area so when we start letting go and we start surrendering we start trusting we start becoming you're going to have releases and it's going to be a physical release it's going to be an emotional release it's going to be a spiritual release and this is what was going on during mercury retrograde and the blue moon and we're, like i said we're coming into a, full, a new moon right now so this is all for our greater good i know some people say oh it's mercury's fault no 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 it's mercury didn't make you do it sweetie mercury's just telling you to get rid of the gunk Mercury's not telling you to hold on to the gum. So we, I always say people blame Mercury retrograde like they blame the world on their problems, right? <laughs> so stop blaming my buddy Hermes and start taking responsibility for your actions and reactions because Hermes is there to show you a fun time. He's a comedian. Hermes is there to guide you through a process. Hermes is actually a brilliant being that really guides you into your light. I could hear him saying, thanks for that, because it's true. I used to always say, oh, Mercury retrograde. And he'd be like, stop blaming me for the choices that you've made in the past that are sitting in your body in the present moment. And that's what it is. Stop blaming others. Look in the mirror. And like Michael Jackson said, it all starts with the man in the mirror. So you can't say things are going to change and wait for your spouse to change or wait for your kids to change or wait for your boss to change. No, you need to change your situation. And that's exactly what it's all about when it comes to Mercury retrograde and especially the blue moon. The blue, blue moon energies was around for like five to seven days. Like it was crazy. I know my clients were going crazy and I'm just like, I'm trying so hard not to laugh because I've been there. I'm like, let me just guide them through this process. And I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing with them because I know once you overcome this, you're going to be like, oh, that was like debilitating to my soul. Yes, it was. But imagine how long you've been holding onto that for. So that's what this whole this whole game is all about when it comes to our body, energetic frequency, and physical matter that we're holding on to. Well, I know that when I was in Cabo San Lucas in June, and I had done this Genesis frequency session, and I was losing my mind. I mean, it was like I was emotionally, I was, it was like whatever they hit, he went into um, first cause is what he did. And I didn't under I, I know what that is, but I didn't understand what had happened prior, you know, before I was able to reach him. And I talked to this one woman who is absolutely amazing. I mean, her credentials are just unbelievable. I have never heard of half the things she did, but I knew exactly what she did because of how she was and how the titles of whatever it was she did. And I remember saying, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And the one thing she said to me is, you're not supposed to know. Because if you were supposed to know, the words would be there. This is an emotional release for you. And you need to be in the emotion. And it was. It was so intense that I was losing my mind. My body was shaking. Because whatever 
Brian had done in that session to release this first cause, which is the original thought that I was emerged into existence with, whatever that was, was so powerful that when I finally let it go, it was unbelievable. But I had to go through the emotional healing because you don't release your anger. You don't release frustration or overwhelm or anything unless you go through the emotional healing. You can heal up here. You can say I'm healed here, but you don't heal until that emotion has left your body because that emotion is so intense. I mean, I watched every, as my anger subsided was because I had more and more understanding of whatever that was the original thought of the anger, what triggered it, what happened to me that caused anger. And as I, uh, and it was always tsunamis to me. They were just the ugly cry and you can't stop crying. And it's like, and then, oh God, here comes another leg. You know, it was just like, just pounding and it sucked, but it was so life changing. And so I've never hated crying like that again. I don't, I still don't like it, but I allow it to come in because it is one of the most healing places you can ever go because it transforms you for the rest of your life. So when you're saying that, and when, it, and when you said, when we talked about what was happening with me and that weight that was on me, it makes sense because I knew my spirit knew I was going to be making these phone calls in a couple of weeks. And even though I didn't have any issue or attitude around the calls, my body had an issue about it. Yeah. You know, and I think I was being pro, pre-warned without knowing it because sometimes we don't know mm -hmm. we're just going on about our business yeah so that old memory that's coming up of don't do it it's scary oh yeah i was terrified and yeah. my coach was just and so when i called him after i had done it i said i didn't tell just one i called five people three of which were so happy that i called and they were looking for me and they want to get in touch with me and they have questions and yeah. the other two i left messages for and then i sent an email drip out to all of them but i was so stunned when i heard oh my god i was looking for your last name or oh my god i do have so many questions for you there's so much in your book and i'm i have to reread it and i'm just sitting here going what that was not what i expected because yeah. in my own mind, the monster was, they're going to beat me up. Why are you calling? What do you want? I'm not giving you any money. And I'm like, I wasn't even asking for money. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally. But, I, but the whole point was, is that I, I went through it and I had a script, not that I really followed the script because, yeah. you know, as soon as you get on the phone, you know that it's gonna unravel the way it needs to unravel and you're gonna be present. You're not gonna read a script like a robot. But yeah. I needed the script so I could feel safe, you know? Yeah. Totally, I get it. <laughs> you know, and, and so that, but it was, it was so freeing. And when I contacted my coach about it, he was like, oh my God, you just opened the door, Kath. Everything's coming your way now. Because he said, I knew you were really fighting this. He allowed yeah. me to be where I was, but he knew there was a lot of resistance. And because and, I had told him, this will be my biggest fear to walk through. Yeah. I told everybody, this is my biggest fear. If I can get through this, I know I'm smooth sailing. Doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, smooth waters, but it's still going to be smooth sailing because the worst of my fears are over. That's a big, that was a big one for me. And things are just slowly kind of, you know, it's still mercury retrograde. So I'm being in the calm right now, knowing that things are going to start changing within the next week or two. Yeah. In a I, good always, way. I always think this, like if life was so smooth, do you think it would be exciting? It wouldn't, it just wouldn't like, and, and this is what spirit's saying. Like sometimes we need to go through those dark moments to recognize a deeper sense of ourselves. We can't find a deeper sense of it in ourselves when we're in this Google Gaga land of la la. Like you don't, you don't see that because it's like, oh, it feels so good. Oh, this is so orgasmic. Oh, this is so much. And then all of a sudden you fall down a hill and you're just like, whoa, what was that all about? And that's where the real lesson is. That's why when people say, Zach, I'm going through depression, I'm going through anxiety, I'm like, great, great. That's a great place to be now that you identified that. Now let's move out of that. What do you want your life to look like? The thing is, is that people don't even know what they want in their life. And if you don't know what will you want in your life, you will always have fear of moving forward. I, I even said this today when I was doing a live, I said, you know, 
you have that fear because you don't know where you're going. But if you have a, a point that you want to reach, just this like a pilot, pilot just doesn't get in a plane and say, well, let's see where the wind blows us today. Um, and then also it's like, oh, we're going to Cancun. Oh, wrong. Sorry. We're going to Mexico. Or we're, sorry, Cancun is in Mexico. We're going to Jamaica all of a sudden, right? It's like, no, you have to have that point of reference where you're going to go. And in between that journey, you're going to learn about yourself. And you're going to make it to that point of reference that you've made. But having a smooth sailing to get there is not fun because you have to fall because you're going to have to redirect yourself. Maybe God's saying, you know what, this was great, but I want to give you more. And it might take a little longer to get there, but there's going to be more journey, more, more of a revealing of who you are. It could be financial um, success. It could be finding a loved one. It could be connecting with old friends. It could be whatever it is, but I'm going to bring you into this point right now. So yes, fear will show up, but I would say you can't serve two masters. So pick fear or pick faith. Right. So when you're looking at this and this is and this is something that I had to learn about faith, because I was like, I know you're with me, God, but why am I so scared shitless? Like, why do I feel like this? And it's like, because you can't serve two masters. So stay in the lane of faith. Yes, you're going to go through emotion of fear because it's something new. But as long as you know where you're going, it's going to be scary. And if it wasn't scary, your dream's not big enough, period. That's exactly right. That is totally right on the money. And the, and the thing is, is the airplanes they're course correcting the whole way through. They they don't sail on a, they don't fly on a on a straight line. They are course correcting the entire trip. Yeah. They are always weaving off, and so are we. And that's the whole point. Is where our goal is. It it isn't a straight uphill climb like we always want to think. It's the worst squiggliest line, and you backtrack. You think, and you go back and forth so many different times that you you're wondering if you're ever going to get there but the thing is is you are going to get there this is all part of your design it's all part of your journey it's all part of what you wanted to grow and to learn and evolve and when you can come to peace with that that this was the perfect life that you created for yourself and you know and i got that finally got to that point of knowing that this was the best life I could have created for myself because anything else, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have what I'm feeling at this moment. And yes, it sucked to do life some days, like most of it. I didn't want to be here, but I came in and said, you know, I should have some fun here. I mean, I chose to come here for a reason. So why don't I find out what that reason is? And once I got rid of all the garbage, because we have so much garbage piled on top of us, you start lifting up the garbage. You start seeing, oh my God, it can be fun here. Life is fun. Oh, I'm meeting nice people. Why? Because I'm turning into a nice person. You know, whatever. I mean, likes attract likes. If you're emoting icky shit, guess what? That's what you're going to get. And, you know, and I discovered that very strongly when I decided I wanted to like learn how to be happier and know what that meant and show my face I was happy too. And, and I was surprised by doing that, how much people changed or came to me and responded just because I was making an effort to be happier. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network, and we have Zach Liotis in the room. And we were talking about airplanes and life. And we're going to turn this back over to Zach because I just learned something new about her on the commercial break. So <laughs> all yours, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. So I like using um, I like using airplanes as an example of how we have to have a destination and we fly to that destination. And and the pilot before. So as a former flight attendant, I'll just say this. When we have our discussion before we even get on the airplane, the pilot will say, this is the weather, this is the route, this is what we're gonna fly over. Um, there's high tailwinds or headwinds, we might encounter some turbulence. So we have a plan, there's a, there's a road plan between point A and point B. So point A is where you are today, point B is where you wanna go to, or you could call that point Z, but it's not point Z because you're always gonna continue going from that point on. So the thing is, is that when you have this roadmap, so this I wanna talk to you about even, uh, creating your blueprint right after Mercury retrograde. So as you're creating this blueprint, look at the different routes that you need to take to get you to that point B phase. 
And in the airline industry, when we're when we start taking off and we're flying, you know, you might hear the pilot say, "We've." We've encountered some unexpected turbulence and we're going to raise the plane another 10,000 feet or 5,000 feet. Why? Because when you raise, think about your vibrational frequency, when an eagle goes up higher, it releases its predators. When you raise your vibrational frequency, what are you doing? You're letting go of the rubbish that you've been holding on to, the mind thoughts, the manipulation, the patterns, the beliefs, the lack, the limitations. So the plane goes up about two to 3,000 feet, up to 10,000 feet. I don't know. I'm not a pilot. I was just a flight. Well, I don't want to say I was just a flight. I was a flight attendant. So we had to go up. And what happens that you need to strap your seatbelt on just so there isn't any accidents along the way. So what do I say that? The seatbelt is more of a reflection. So in that place of raising the vi your vibration, in a place of the plane going up, you are strapped on so that you won't get hurt. But you're also strapping on in order for you to see things differently, to say, am I going on the right path here? Do I have to navigate differently? A pilot might say, we're just going to go to the right or to the left a few degrees so we could avoid more clouds and turbulence too. So that's why there's never a clear path, even as a pilot they're always navigating that plane up down sideways whatever it is and just like in life when we're raising our vibrational frequency we're going beyond all the rubbish that we've been holding on to coming into that light getting more clarity we keep on moving when we come down we could hit turbulence we could hit anger we could hear fear we could hit frustration we could even have other people's judgments towards us we could go back into the old patterns we could go back into people pleasing how do you get out of that? Raise your vibration. You're getting, you're, you're really, what you're doing is that you're avoiding the turbulence that is sitting on a lower vibrational frequency for you. So every time you find yourself as you're going from point A to point B, if you have to take that reflective time, strap on your seatbelt and raise your vibration. Because as you're raising your vibration, what are you getting? You're getting clarity. You're getting knowingness. You're getting an upgraded blueprint, which is your roadmap. You're getting understanding of who you are becoming. Yes, you're going to lose people along the way. That's the gas. That's the steam. That's moving you forward. You got to go right or you got to go left. You got to navigate yourself. So look at life as I want to, I love how, um, well, there was an uh, author that I always read and I can't remember her name, but she always says, you know, life is a game. It's just how you play it. But I like traveling. So life is like a road trip or a, a, an airplane trip or a destination you're going to. It's just how you're going to pack up. It's going to be what you let go and what you choose to carry on within those turbulent times. Because you could really get stuck in that turbulence if you allow other people to dictate you. So raise your vibration. And just find that smooth sailing and come down again, raise your vibration. It's really easy to come down because that's our comfort zone. That's where we are most comfortable. That's what we know most of. If, if change was easy, the whole world would change. But it's not. Change, you go through debilitating emotional, physical, spiritual, suffering and pain. You lose people in your life. And those weren't the people that were going to be there to support you. So if you're going through turbulent times in that change, Raise your vibration and continue going. Stay focused on where you want to land in point B. So use your roadmap or use your flight plan. That's what they called it, the flight plan, to get you to that point B, safe and sound, fully at peace with yourself, knowing that there is more for you when you raise up your vibration and when you land at your destination. And also when you're raising your vibration, you're going into a higher dimensional frequency at the same time, because that's what part of raising the vibration is, is you're getting out of this lower vi dense vibration and you're going higher. So as we, as the planet ascends going into the fourth and fifth dimensions, what does that do? We navigate through our emotions in there because it is not a logical place. It is not linear. There is nothing about the 3D world that's in the fourth and fifth dimensions. It's a totally different vibrational frequency. And if we're ascending into that, that's what's happening, folks, is that we are ascending and you're coming along for the ride. So either you're going to get on board and, and do it and find people who can help navigate you there, or you're just going to be one of those crazy people that are just, God knows what's going to happen to those people because they're fighting and resisting. I mean, you look at what's going on in the political arena alone is enough to show you 
I don't want this anymore in my life. I don't like where we're going. I don't like what I see. I don't like the division and the polarity that we're experiencing. But this again is all by design. And we all came here at this point in time to experience this. And my experience is I don't have to participate in that. I'm going to create a different reality, a different world, a different vibrational frequency. So I will be the way shower of this is how you get out. This is like Moses parting the Red Sea. They were up to their eyeballs in water before that sea parted and they thought they were going to die. But it was that faith that kept them going. Moses knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was going, that that sea would part. He knew not the people behind them. They're just all the crazy people like what we've got on our planet now. But if you know and you believe in who you are and you have a faith, whatever that system of faith for you is, that's going to keep that boat fairly steady in these very turbulent times that we are in. So even though it's crazy out there, it's not crazy inside of here. It's not crazy up here. This is where an opportunity is arising for me. This is my opportunity to show people, you know, there's a different way, but you're going to have to go through the gunk, but you don't have to do it alone because there's enough of us out there right now that have been through these, what, what do I want to call them? I'm not, it's not challenges. It's something else. We, we've been through the rain of fire. Um, and we've been cleansed and purified. We still have a way to go, but we we're there. We have the basic foundations to get you there and lead you. And that's what I, I mean, that's part of what this whole show is about is to bring people on to say, you know, look at all the different walks of life that have been on here. It doesn't matter if you had money, you came from poverty, you're a millionaire, you were a millionaire. Everybody still says the same thing. I was yeah. a, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Yeah. I always say you can't, again, you can't serve two masters, but this time we're serving the ego and the, uh, sorry, the spirit and the flesh. So either you're going to be with the flesh, which is being governed by politicians that don't have your greater interest in life, or you're going to be governed by the spirit, which is there to upraise your vibrational frequency. See, if you're governed by humanity, which is your government, you're going to lower your vibrational frequency because they want to dumb you down. That's the thing. When you are being governed by the spirit, you're raising your vibrational frequency because they want you to be in that place of light. They want you to realize that we are one. We are one humanity. We are one people. Regardless of how much melanin you have in your skin, it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. God's creatures, God's creatures all have the same red blood regardless of who gets cut. But when you get in that place of the flesh, when you get in place being governed by man, man wants to bring separation. Man wants to bring uh, fighting battles. God will have its, his own battles with our own inner demons is what I call it. And this is why Mercury Retrograde was here for the last three weeks is order for us so we could fight our own battles and really raise that vibrational frequency. So you have a choice of who you want to be governed by, by man or by spirit. And I, I would say the spirit is God. You could call it universe. You could call it grace. You could call it whatever you call, want to call it. I'll call it God. As you can see, I got my, my, my team behind me. But that's what it is. Like it, You can't serve two masters, which is fear and faith. And you can't be, you can't be governed by two people. You're either going to be governed by the flesh or you're going to be governed by the spirit. So there's choices that man has to make. And it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable when you get into the to the spirit because the flesh is going to think you're crazy. Oh, there goes another whack job. Oh, there goes one other one fly off the cuckoo's nest. But then you sit here and you look at the ones that are governed by humanity and you're just like, what is going on? Like, you have to question dumb. I'm sorry, I just had to say it. You have to question dumb or intelligence, I should say. Because it's almost like you're giving your power away. It's almost like you're giving your brain away. It's giving your intelligence. You're giving away common sense. And, and it doesn't, nothing makes sense when you're governed by the flesh. It just, and I don't want to get into it because I know spirits like talk about it. I'm just like, uh, we don't have enough time for that. But when you're governed by the flesh, know that your life will be harder by then by being governed by the spirit. 
by the time you get to that point of your spirit from flesh to spirit, yes, it's going to be difficult because you're becoming a new, but once you get into that spirit and people start talking to you, like I do, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, I didn't even hear that. That just sounds so dumb to me. But anyways, that's just them. And you just accept people for who they are because the spirit says we are one humanity. And when spirit says we are one humanity, it's almost like you look at them and you're just like, I just want to open up your eyes but I could only guide your eyes to open. It's how you decide to open up your eyes. It's how, what path you decide to go on. It's who you decide to be governed by. It's what master you decide to choose from. It doesn't have to do anything. Kathleen and I have been through our journey. She's written three books on it. I speak about it, right? And that's the thing is that we've all gone through a journey and we're just telling people to jump on this journey with us because the flesh is gonna mess you up while the spirit's going to awaken this beauty inside of you. Oof, and it's got goosebumps all over my body saying that. I love that. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we don't have a whole lot of time left. You know, it just goes by so fast when I have Zach on the phone, on the phone, on the show. But the one thing that I think that you said that was just so powerful was we really do have to make those decisions. And the one thing that I know that it really did suck to be me as I was in my journey of awakening, but my life is not the same. There's nothing that you could even identify remotely of my old life since I went through that journey, that there's nothing but good coming towards me because I moved through all of the anger I mean, I still have anger. Don't get me wrong. We're always going to be going layer and layer and layer down. But uh, for the most part, so much of my anger is gone. So much of my frustration is gone. I'm a lot more tolerant. Some days, not so much when it's on the highway and there's crazy road rage people out there. But on a whole, I'm getting better with that too. You know, it's like I'm just in this other place. And and I think that's the most powerful state of being is when you are in your enlightened higher vibrational i'm in alignment with me i'm in alignment with my mission my purpose who i am why i'm here and i think that's one of the biggest things that people don't look at or see about themselves is that they are out of alignment or they say i'm in alignment but i get out of alignment but if you're really in alignment and you really do understand the alignment process which i have an amazing process to take people through and how to stay in that alignment. And it becomes your entire life, not I'm in alignment with my family and out of alignment with my business. It's not that anymore. This alignment is all encompassing. And that's what people do is we've also segmented. Oh, I'm this person at my family and this place, you know, when I'm at work or at church or when I'm with this friend or that friend, we're always putting on a different mask. And it's time to take all those masks off and come back into alignment, which then, as far as I'm concerned, when you're in alignment, you're connected with God, with spirit, whatever you want to call it, because that's your, that's your true North. Mm -hmm. And if you're in your true North, all you know how to do is who's driving the bus. Now spirits guiding you, you're making the, you're making decisions, but spirits guiding you. You're in that surrendered place. Life becomes easier. It doesn't mean that, Stuff's not going to happen because it does, but it's how you're reacting to it is because you're in a different place. You know, you, your priorities change. Yeah. It's not people are out to get me anymore. I, I keep on hearing the word fork on the road. Then I just keep on hearing spirit repeating that. It's always like having that fork on the road. You have a path to choose of what you want to take. Both paths could take you to your next point, but one's going to take longer and show you a different journey with probably with more difficulty. And one's going to be a little more ease and more love and more understanding, but it's still going to have that difficulty. But it's just how far you've come on your growth that you're going to choose that path that you're going to go down. So whenever there's a fork on the road and you have those two roads that you could take, you really have to go within yourself and say, which path do I want to take? This is this is the pros and cons of this path. This is the pros and cons of this path. Of course, leaving some room for flow to happen. Because when you're in alignment, you still go through the ups and downs. It's not like, oh, hippity hoo -dah, like it's rainbows and unicorns. It's, it's really not. It's just that you are more in a line with where you want to go. 
but you will find some obstacles along the way that you're going to have to problem solve. And the more that you get into this game, problem solving becomes so much easier because you'll get into moving your body. You'll get into stretching your body, releasing that, that stagnant energy that's sitting, that dense energy that's sitting in your body. And when we allow for that reflection time to happen, when there's that fork on the road, that's when we have that place of growth to go. You know, I'm just going to take this path down there. It's not because it feels easier. It's because it feels like I'm more in alignment with this path. This path doesn't feel right for me. It just doesn't give me that full body shiver. This one gives me that full body shiver. And I always teach people about emotion because emotion is a full body knowingness, right? It's not just your mind. It's not just your heart. I always say the heart's a liar. So you have to really be aligned with your mind, your body, and your emotions because it's your emotions that's going to really navigate you to where you want to go. And if you have unresolved trauma and you have unresolved emotions coming up, then you're probably going to take the harder path because you still continue to have to learn about those emotions, about how to heal through that trauma. So, so you have that choice. And that's why it's always beautiful when you have someone guiding you through that journey because they've been there. They know what the energy feels like. They could take you down. I, I call it a shortcut, but it's not really a shortcut. It'll just be shorter to get you to where you want to go with the lessons that you have to learn because now you got someone like how you say, I got my coach, right? So it's always having that someone that you could call and be like, I have this, I have this choice. I could go down this path or this path. What feels good to you? Okay, let's talk about this. How does this feel? How does that feel? What's going on in your mind? What's going on in your heart? What's going on in your emotions? What's going on in your body? Right? If I'm feeling bloated and if I'm feeling constipated, I know that I'm not, I shouldn't be going down that path, but if I'm feeling fluid and I'm feeling light and I'm feeling happy, then you know what? That path feels good to me. So we really always have to take that reflective step back to recognize where we want to go. It's like what I said, that flight plan, right? We're always navigating the flight plan. We're always navigating it. Imagine a pilot. Yes, he does put it on autopilot, but he's still there you know, minding the autopilot. It's not that it's going to autopilot's having God in front of you. That's what I look at an autopilot. And then he's navigating you. But sometimes you're like, okay, like I'm afraid of this path. Like, God, how are you going to guide me through this one? Then you're guiding yourself. Cause sometimes you feel like, you know, he's not around right now. And I've been down that path where I've called Kathy and I'm like, listen, I don't like the way my homeboy's treating me up there. Like, are you getting anything for me? Like, help me on this one, sister. Help me on this one. Because it's like, let's see where you could take yourself on this journey, right? It's like, how many times did I call you, Kathleen? I'm like, Kathleen, seriously, I'm getting really pissed off at this. I can't hear the way I used to hear. And I had this conversation with Spirit the other day. I pulled out my pendulum and I'm like, I heard, are you serious? I'm like, well, you guys want to play and I'm going to play with the pendulum. And they're just like, well, you know how you feel about the pendulum. I'm like, I'll pray on the pendulum, right? I'll pray on the pendulum. And then I... I as I'm asking the pendulum question, I'm hearing all these things in my ear. And it's just like, would you just grow up, child? You're still a little kid, right? And it's just like, and when I hear that, I hear, go have fun. Go have fun. Go do you. Go have fun. Go explore. Because it's in that having fun that life becomes easier. It's in that having fun when you get into more alignment. It's in that having fun when you meet people. It's in that having fun is when you start to attract life. That's exactly right. And we only have two minutes left. So how can people get a hold of you, Zach? <laughs> I can go on forever. I just want to talk forever when I'm with you. Oh, my God. You can find me on Instagram at Spiritual Hustler. That's Spiritual, H-S-T-L-R. You can also find me on my website, bfuclub.com. That's bold, fierce, unstoppable, club.com. I also have a retreat coming up September 20th to the 22nd here in Ontario. We have a lakefront property that we're going to go through water fire ceremonies, cacao ceremonies. We're shaking the body up. We're connecting to spirit guides. So we're doing a lot of things. So meet me at bfuclub.com or spiritual hustler, H-S-T-L-R on Instagram. Well, I want to thank you so much, Zach, for being on the show. It just goes by way too fast when you come on. We just have way too much fun and so much information comes in. So thank you again for being on the show and I'll see you the next time. Thank you, everyone. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And if you found any value, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the channel. And you can also take a link and give it to friends and family if you think it might help them 
during the show. And if you're struggling with anything that we talked about today, feel free to reach out um, to me at Brave TV at Kathleen M. Flanagan, or you can even reach out to Zach and her contact information is going to be in the show notes. Um, I'm sure she would be more than happy to have a conversation with you as well. And you would be in amazing hands with Zach. My books, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul and Awakened are available on Amazon.com and the KMF Flanagan.com site. Be sure to visit Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies and enter Brave TV for the coupon codes. And if you want to go and visit KathleenMFlanagan.com for the list of services and products that I'm offering. And I also have that three-minute de-stress meditation that is absolutely free to you. And that concludes our show for the day. And I will see you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.